So we've just come into um, West Virginia, all excited. We've just had a right good day. Went and saw a creepy tree. Gary made a video and all of a sudden the engine light went on and uh, we've had to pull over because it, it went into limp home mode again. I've made a cup of tea. Hang on, he's coming in. What's the score? Do you know what's happening? I'm just cooling it down. I've done, I've done the, most of the stuff that I did last time. I've just got to wait for it to cool before I can touch some of the other stuff. Right. And then we'll see. I'll have a cup of tea now and then I'll... I hope we haven't given ourselves a bloody curse putting that flipping video on. Do you know what I mean? Do you know, you're taking the piss out of that tree. We were fine until you did that, and then that's it. We're, we're fine. I hope it's not nothing like that. We take it all back. I don't know if we should take it down. It's got no bloody watch hours on it anyway. <laughs> so we're just talking, and Gary is really hoping it's a faulty injector again, similar to last time, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'll just I'll, I'll have a check. I mean, that that wastegate pipe might have popped off or something simple like that. So. I hope so. so well, the thing I... is, we've got a, a campsite booked, haven't we? And it's twenty miles from here. Yeah. Um, every time we go in the campsite, so we've got no connectivity. I haven't got much connectivity here right now. I've got like one bar, um, so I haven't got an awful lot, have I? No. But we're parked right side a McDonald's. So worst case scenario, there is a McDonald's there, but. I don't really want a McDonald's. I've got food anyway. But this is obviously where the truckers stop. And they, they get pissed off. You're taking their only little bit of space, don't they? Yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine, babes. I'm sure we will be fine. That was, we'll, it's we'll not nice it when, when it goes into limp mode, is it's it? It's horrible. You know, especially it's when you're going up hills good. and that. It's a horrible feeling. It's quite frightening when it does that and you're over here. You're just thinking, oh, God, what's wrong now? But it's done really well to go this far without causing oh, yeah. any issues for quite a while. Yeah. But she's got to she's got to get on the the ship to Baltimore yeah. in two weeks. Well, that was 2000, you know, two thousand miles away that we did that we had the issue. So she's done all right though since then. Yeah, It'll be something simple. I hope so, Babs. Yeah, I hope so. You weren't this confident last time. I am now that I know what I'm doing. We'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I don't want to be a negative ninny, but you know what I mean. Hey. <laughs> Gary, you've just turned the engine on. What's happened? Um, right, so I've cleaned all the all the injectors like I did last time. Yeah. Just um, made sure the the wastegate tube was on, the pipe was on, which it was solid. Um, and I've just turned it on again now, and the engine light's gone on, gone off. There's no there's no bumping like there was before as well. So it's the same thing. It's a it's a electrical connector or electrical connection on one of the injectors. Right. I don't know which one, but if I do that every time, I'll get it. There's only four, so I'll clean them all four of them and I'll be, I'll be all right. Okay, are we going to get on the road? Let's get on the road, get up to that campsite oh, before it well gets Well done, babes. So, after our jubilation that Gary managed to get the motorhome going again yesterday, the engine light went on again. We're literally about 20 miles from where we parked last night. The campsite was on a right old steep hill. So we've been going up and down steep hills and I don't think that's helping. Gary thinks it's the electrical problem again. He's got to keep cleaning the sensors. Um, I'm slightly worried we're about 250 miles out from Baltimore and we're going to go and stay with a couple of friends as well. Um, I just want to get around, back to UK really for the parts I think at this stage. This is, this is really turning into a, a little bit of a nightmare. Obviously he's back under the bonnet again. Poor soul. Just cleaned them back up again, haven't you? And again, it's... yeah. But I, I have noticed that on one of the, on one of the, um, just oh, sorry, on them. But I thought it was going on, but it's oh just the god, on two of the injectors. Yeah. There's a seal that goes in once you put the electrical connector, and both seals have snapped. So it might be that they're just not fitting in properly, which is letting the dust in. Right. So, so can not, we buy those be, seals? I don't think we can buy those seals. I don't think we can buy those seals. We're going to get some fuel because the gas is, well, the pretty diesel is three ninety nine here, isn't it? Yeah, so it's pretty it's good really value. good value. Mary's just bought the electrical connector seal in, and, and as you can see, it's got like a little split in it, hasn't it? Mm, it has. And that's what you think's allowing the the dust to get in, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely allowing the dust to get in. So, so what you're going to do? You're just going to glue I'm gonna, it? I'm going to. Do a little super glue job on it now, just to hold it in place so that I can get it into where it's supposed to fit properly. Okay. So we're on the side of the road again, and uh, Gary's fixing it again. The light keeps going on. It's driving us nuts now.
Poor old Gary's not looking so uh, confident anymore. I'll tell you what, it's all, all sunshine and rainbows. Here we are with the, the bloody bonnet up again. This is my front view constantly these days. I'm on the side of a road. We're on the uh, 50. And the thing just keeps going on. Can't really work out what it is. A crazy moment of deja vu. <laughs> the engine light's gone off again, hasn't it? But Gary's, Gary's <laughs> beside himself. But the guy you've just spoke to gave you some elastic bands, didn't he, to yeah, replace them? Yeah. So he, he basically said an old trick was was replacing those particular seals with a rubber band. He said just to get you home. He said, and then get. Does he mean more. get you home like one mile away? No, no. He said he said it should work. So I've put them on. We've tested the engine. The engine light's gone off. Um, and it's not come back on again like it did before when I was trying to just play around with the seals we already had. So, um, right, you know, let's go. It's 10 to 4 here. We've yeah. probably got an hour before um, dark, so we need to get a crack on. We ain't even got somewhere to stay tonight, have we? No. We're boondocking wherever we can. Yeah. We spoke too soon. We've got to go back to uh, the place because the engine light's gone up again. Can you feel that a little bit? Was that juddering because of you or no. is it juddering? Because of the engine. Okay, we're just trying to get the engines juddering right now. We've just got to get up this hill and to turn, left in oh, to turn this sat nav off. Drive me mad. Just got to get up to the the garage, which is just around this corner. Oh God, it doesn't like hills at all. I can feel this. You've got your foot right down as well. I've not got my foot down. This is just being gentle. Just being gentle. Okay. It's that, it's that um, injector again. You can feel it, can you? Yeah, I can feel it. So. Oh, thank goodness we're near somewhere, though. So, this is... Where are you thinking of parking? Just here, on this lower end? Yeah. This is the worst bit about not having parts, isn't it? Oh, Christ. What was that? Oh, my God, what was that? Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna keep yourself in. So we are back on the road again after Gary's cleaned the injectors. Um, but we're nervous now, aren't we, Bub? Yeah. There's no two ways about it. We feel really worried about getting the van back to Baltimore. Um, in fact, we're supposed to be meeting two of our best friends over the next couple of days, but we feel so worried about driving the van there. We just don't feel like it's the right thing to do, do we? No. We've got it. We've just got to get the van to Baltimore because that's where we're shipping her. Um, and driving any any distances other than what we're trying to achieve, I think might be it's too worrying. I mean, oh god, these roads are all bloody hilly, aren't they? Yeah. The motorway is 21 miles away. When we get the motorway, then it will be less hilly. We'll see. We'll see. Oh god. We, we just want to get it to Baltimore now, don't we? Yeah. When, when the engine light goes on, yeah. We clean the injectors and it goes off. So I know it's the injectors and it's just really frustrating. It's just each time it's like, how long will they last, you know? That's the problem, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, got to get this back to the UK because no garage here can sort it because they can't read the codes. And honestly, guys, if you come in this way and you're bringing your own van, really consider like all of the things that we've not done, which is bring extra, extra parts, isn't it? No. Because you did bring some, didn't you, Bob? I did but bring some, just not not the ones that have gone wrong. Is that just my imagination or does that feel bumpy? It's your imagination, that's the road that oh, God. See, I'm a nervous wreck now. It doesn't, it makes you nervous, doesn't it, Gary? It does. He's done really well, to, he's got it on the road now four times. I think it's four times, isn't it? Yeah. And we, just, we literally just want to get it to Baltimore, get it on the ship. Sat nav showing that we're about 230 odd miles from Baltimore. Now, the port is quite close to Baltimore Central. It's a place called Dundalk that you bring it to. Um, we're supposed to be doing a, a house sit in the region. And we're not, we're now, we don't know what to do, do we, Gary? We're not sure whether we take take the van straight to Baltimore now, try and get her on an earlier ship even, I don't know. So this is even worse. We've got like an 8% gradient road going all the way up. It's really pushing at the engine. We've got about an hour till it gets dark, maximum, and uh, we think we might try to stay at Walmart if we can get there. Come on, girl, let's get up these hills. This is absolutely horrible. Guess what? 
Here's a surprise. It's gone on again. It's getting quite late as well. It's nearly five o'clock. So we haven't got much daylight left. Gary, bless him. Back under the bonnet. <sighs> We've just pulled over just by some auto sales place. I hope they don't mind. I mean, at the end of the day, what can you do? If you broke down, you broke down. We've gone literally four or five miles. Gary's trying to put some stuff on the electrical connectors or whatever. But we're we're on a road where we're trying we're trying to get up to a Walmart. It's literally eleven miles from here. Got the four ways on on a on a road, but they come shooting past so quickly when they come. The van shakes. Um, I just I really hoping we can get somewhere tonight. Oh God, this is this is horrible. This is what most of the roads are starting to look like every time everywhere we're going. We're constantly going up and down hills. Beautiful sunset but it just feels nerve-wracking we've got six miles to get to walmart i'm really hoping we can make it it's not on yet so come on girl let's get there. to walmart thank god and that was a 10 mile stint without it going wrong so that bodes well but we're, we're on the motorway in the morning and then you know, if it goes on the motorway, we can pull over onto the hard shoulder, do a bit of work. Oh, my God. And crack on. So. I hope that doesn't happen. And then if it takes all day, there's a rest area tomorrow night, and we'll just, we'll get there. Okay. So we've just, we've just done a right old climb, haven't we, Gary? About three miles. So last night, we stayed at a Walmart. Where was that area again? In Morgantown. Morgantown. We stayed at this uh, Walmart. It was all right. Thank you very much, Walmart, again. Saviors of uh, the supermarket. Um, field anyway so we just had to climb up about a three mile like climb haven't we yeah the engine like we're just worried about it going on and on again it managed to do 10 miles last night before we got into walmart car park and uh now we just need to see how far it'll go hopefully we're hoping it'll get us to baltimore we've got about 200 miles to get into the region now haven't we we have every time we get a hill or we hit a bloody bump my heart is in my mouth because i think oh. here we go again so uh, yeah, it's a, it, this is actually quite this is quite stressful, you know. Joking aside, it feels very stressful, doesn't it? We've got the bag in the van because, of course, our, our door, tool bag. yeah, the tool bag is in the van because normally it's underneath on the side where the door is. But if we if we have to pull into the hard shoulder, we're gonna have traffic running that side. Gary won't be able to get at it. So we've just got to be very mindful of how we get in and out the van if we do get an issue. But we're kind of hoping we'll get on our way and we'll just be in the region ready to ship her back and we can get her some parts that she desperately needs. We've been driving for about half an hour and the light went on. We're, it's really unpleasant being right on the interstate when it, when it goes on. Bonnet's up. Gary reckons he's, he's solved it uh, this time around. He's checked injectors three and four four on its own didn't work three and four took the engine light off so he's just tightening things up now or something i think and hopefully we're going to be back on the road again the van oh gosh can you feel it shake as it comes they go past oh god it's horrible so as if um monitoring the van constantly is not stressful enough for gary we can now see a massive fire as we're heading down well we're heading down towards friedrich Gosh, this looks huge. We don't know what this is. The fire's over towards that side. I hope people are all right. But there's obviously fire engines now going towards it. Oh, good gosh. So we were really lucky and made it to a campground. And there's a fantastic campground right inside the um, Beltway of Washington. Uh, that we've stayed in. We'll put the, the details down below. It's a state park. It's $20 to stay overnight and all the pitches are fairly empty at the moment, to be honest. Uh, $20, no facilities other than um, bins, toilets and showers. There's no electric hookup, but it's perfect for us. Uh, what a relief to get here. Our lovely friend York has actually travelled all the way up to see us and stay at the campground with us. Um, as you know, we made it to the campground. Um, we were very lucky to make it. And Gary is not actually fixing the van for once. He's just putting some stabilisers on before we have a drink. Because you already feel a bit like you're at sea, don't you, when you've had a few wines? You always need stabilisers when you've had a drink. Well, I've just said that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we're having breakfast with our friends in their A class, and uh, it feels like a, 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 a hotel. luxury hotel, doesn't it, Gary? <laughs> we're not used to so much space. They've got like a table. They're all cooking over there, and uh, you all can't talk at the moment because uh, he's cooking. So he can't do two things at once, can you, you? Hi. <laughs> Are you talking about the attention and so on and so on? <laughs> Did you? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, so now, let me let me tell everybody here. It's fault of you women because you demand full attention from us, 200%. So there's no time for anything else. We don't, darling, we just and demand we food. And we don't want to piss you off. <laughs> you know? I don't know what York's cooking. What are you cooking? Uh, Fried, fried eggs. He's okay. cooking fried eggs, and there's there's Karen. She looks lovely in her red top. <laughs> we'll be heading off today. We're going to do a house sit for a week, so we won't be showing you the house sit. Um, and then we'll get the van ready. But we will show you getting the van ready. We're on the way, pretty much, aren't we? In a way, we've left our house sit, and uh, we're heading to Baltimore. The van, fingers crossed, seems to be okay, and we're about 10 miles away from our hotel. We're staying in a hotel tonight, um, and Gary's then gonna take the van to the Baltimore port tomorrow morning, aren't ya? Yep. It feels really real now. I feel a mixture of sadness, but elation. I don't know, we do, how do you feel? It's it's a, definitely a tale of two halves here. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a fantastic adventure, and you know, we've not seen everything. So, you know, if we decided to go for another year, we could still see another year's worth of stuff. Yeah. But I'm really excited to see the family and see the grandbaby. I and, can't wait. You know, I love traveling anyway, so, so yeah. it's, it's all good. So I, I'm, I'm sort of definitely, definitely excited to get back, but sad at leaving at the same time. And it's Europe next, so I'll show you what it looks like as we're entering Baltimore. It's a really grey day as well. It's, it's, Look at this. It's, uh, it is very grey. It's a load of old smog or steam or whatever coming out of that. But uh, yeah, it definitely feels like we're leaving. Baltimore docks by the look of it, some of it. That's the other side though, isn't it? Yeah, and that big vessel there is a car carrier. Is that a car That's carrier? That's they're shaped like, isn't it? We made it to our hotel and there's a slight relief here, isn't there, Gary? That's our high car. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love I the colour. <laughs>